Of course, the biggest headlines have to do with what's happening to Kenya Power. The fact that uh, top managers were arraigned yesterday on corruption-related charges. The other big story is Obama's visit to Kenya. Uh, the former U.S. president was here. Uh, he arrived on Sunday. Yesterday, he visited his ancestral home and later in the evening proceeded to South Africa where he's attending uh, the 100th uh, year anniversary of Nelson Mandela's birth. Let's start off with what's happening at Kenya Power. Of course, the matter is before court, so we cannot really uh, go uh, deep into that. But this is big, and uh, these kind of headlines, we've seen them over and over, especially this year. Uh, after the March 9th handshake, we've seen scandal after scandal of cor uh, related to corruption uh, being uh, exposed on uh, dailies. This particular one was exposed by the Daily Nation a few weeks back and there was instant denial by uh, Kenya Power bosses. Now we see them hounded in court. It's, it, it's in the manner now we do that the questions arise. Uh, the manner that uh, we are getting more people to say, uh, sit behind bars. People who <coughs> served in senior positions either in government, uh, including PSs, now we are seeing top managers of a state parastatal having to spend two, three, four nights behind bars. Uh, before even the bail hearing. This is definitely a departure from the past. Uh, does it give you confidence that we are really fighting corruption, just seeing uh, at least top managers, the level of Ken Tarus, Ben Chumo, uh, actually spending a night or two behind bars? Well, let's start with you, Senator. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think uh, I must congratulate uh, or thank the nation for bringing this at the public domain and um, uh, repeat, uh, repeat once again uh, that uh, the power uh, of oversight yeah, on public fin finances uh, cannot only be done by the National Assembly or the Senate. The mm -hmm. public have a serious role. The media and the civil society, which I think have more confidence with the, with the media and the civil society doing some of these uh, or ending members of parliament mm -hmm. doing this. So whatever the nation did uh, actually shows that th there was something to mm -hmm. worthy investigation and that is why I think uh, after investigations the, 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 the DPP has found a reason to arrange these people in court. So they are doing a commendable job. We must work in partnership to ensure that we get rid of Kenya of corruption and also thank uh, His Excellency the President, is uh, the former Prime Minister, and the government in general for those that believe that we really must uh, get rid of this vice of corruption. Yes. So we can... Uh, but, but does it, does, uh, it uh, does it give you confidence that... That's why I'm ending. Okay. This is my opening remarks. Oh, okay. uh, at times it's upon that. <laughs> for I, I, I thought, I thought you, had, uh, you had ignored that question. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so... Uh, I think, as I have seen, because these people came together, and after the handshake of the 9th of March, there appears to be uh, some, some new uh, energy. There is impetus in the, in the war against corruption. And I think from that time, very many big people have found themselves in the dock. And... Uh, for whatever worth it is, when these people there, even if uh, nothing else happens, mm -hmm. probably, you will find that those people that work on them in all these offices or in any other office, people will get more careful and yes. start saying, oh, if this is happening, then it can also happen to me. Yes. So they'll be more careful. They'll be more vigilant. So it is a deterrent. And in my view, if, if for the time being, it is a serious deterrent measure but okay. uh, you know the war against corruption the war uh, 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 against uh, any kind of vice in society must be fully uh, supported but when it comes because i believe with the changes that the president did we must also commend him for this in the department of the dci in the department of uh, uh, of the dpp I think this must be playing together yes. or working together to ensure that this happens. Okay. But I must also remind them that we must all be responsible. Mm -hmm. There is that aspect of presumption of innocence before one is uh, found guilty. There is 
the, also the aspect that do not fall, or one nobody should get into uh, either any kind of political chant or, or, or manslinging, mm -hmm. because certain goals, political goals, have to be met. Okay. But really continue asking them to really be guided by the law and the evidence. Because Kenyans right now, the morale, the, the, the confidence on Kenyans is rising day by day. Yes. So in the event that they may have acted in a manner uh, that finally we do not find convictions uh, when the whole process mm -hmm. goes through the legal system, then they will have done this country and the service. Okay. So I ask them to look at the evidence mm -hmm. that they have and do their best they should to be. ensure that they have a good day in court because yes. finally yes. what will count mm -hmm. is how many convictions that it, they will be able it to definitely, secure yes. out of this process. It definitely has to go beyond this. But uh, when I to <coughs> watch, a lot has been said about what's happening. Yes, it's a spectacle, but it does serve a purpose according to uh, even Senator Linturi, that even it, it serves as probably just a deterrent. Uh, the fact that uh, we've seen a whole governor spend uh, at least two nights in police custody. We'd seen a uh, uh, principal secretary uh, spent two, uh, quite a number of uh, nights, at least a week, uh, in police custody. Now we are seeing uh, bosses, the level of uh, those in charge of Kenya Power, which is not a small uh, company, having to spend three, four nights in police custody. That in itself, despite the arguments around it and will come there, does uh, to a great extent uh, deter uh, future corruption, don't you think? Yes, that's um, uh, uh, quite true. I think the public confidence on this is um, is boosted. You see, like the about eight uh, directors, and they're mm -hmm. top directors. You have uh, the immediate former boss, who's about to be, mm -hmm. or is shortlisted for one of the constitutional commission, the current one, and basically all heads of um, uh, department, uh, anybody that touched anything to do with that procurement chain, mm -hmm. you can see that they're all in. And the public confidence for me goes beyond that because I see they've gone even to the companies that supplied the, the substandard uh, transformers. A couple here, I think uh, uh, two of them, uh, the directors of those companies have been put in. Uh, the question that we must think about then is um, what next? Mm -hmm. But I think so far They've shown that there is no sacred cow. They will go for anybody and anybody who's uh, been involved in corruption. The question is, like uh, Senator says, do we get convictions? Yes. But I think in terms of uh, deterrence, I think anybody dealing anything with procurement right now will be seeing that it's not business as usual. Mm -hmm. When I is in their mind, I think I've also seen it's not business as usual. There was a lot of politics like uh, this is targeting, this is mm -hmm. targeting, but I think they have remained firm, and I want to thank the DPP and this team, and refuse to listen to this political, this or the other you've seen in terms of even governors. Mm -hmm. Nobody is seeing any political party coming up and saying, you know, you're prosecuting uh, our people or something of the sort. Mm -hmm. So I think the, 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 the confidence on this goes way high. Ultimately then, mm -hmm. uh, we must deal with the question <coughs> of the presumption of innocence. Because I think uh, the, the, the Constitution is very clear about this, that all these people are presumed innocent. The fact that they've been arraigned there mm -hmm. doesn't mean they are guilty. Yes. But on the fact that the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the entire process has gone on and abated beyond the political uh, noise, I think so far the confidence of the public. There's now an, a different discussion that comes up in the manner in which these people are arrested and... Uh, put behind bars even before they are arraigned. And uh, the fact that uh, these arrests are being made probably on a Friday. And this matter has come up even in Parliament, and I know there's that discussion. Uh, I, I don't know how far it can go, especially in the National Assembly, uh, trying to stop uh, police from making arrests on Friday. Uh, and yesterday in court, uh, your colleague as well, uh, Professor Ojienda, made a mention of it, that uh, this needs to change, that uh, probably police are intentionally making arrests on Fridays just to ensure that people spend uh, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night in police custody uh, because the only time they can be arraigned is on Monday. Uh, do you think that that's something that should be changed? I mean, it is not written anywhere uh, that people should be arrested on a Monday mm -hmm. so that they can go to court on Tuesday or the same day. I think arrests are meant uh, depending on what time 
that the DPP has finalized with the file mm -hmm. and has communicated the same to the DCI or the EECC or whoever the agency implementing the order of the DPP is. So it will not be very fair to blanketly say that uh, arrests are being designed to take place on a Friday. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, uh, the, the, the right to bail uh, is uh, a fundamental right in our constitution. And the law and the constitution is so clear that you must be arraigned in court, I think, within uh, 24 hours after your arrest. So what that means is that uh, for whatever reason, whatever crime that you may have committed, as long as you are arrested today, then tomorrow you must go to court. And uh, whether the file is ready or not and you've been arrested, then present the suspect before the judge or the magistrate and then uh, the charges will be rent, and if the, 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 the prosecution uh, is not ready uh, for the taking of plea, then the magistrate or the judge will direct on what should happen. Mm -hmm. Because that is clearly what the law provides. Yes. And uh, Yet courts and, are not uh, open on weekends. And, and, and No, I am waiting to the next mm. stage. But you realize the investigating officers, because you cannot, just like any market, you will not find, you will not miss a madman. Uh, the investigators, uh, because of this aspect of wanting to be seen, to be doing quite a lot and to keep the spirit high, they have forgotten that aspect mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, the right to bail is an inalienable right. And, and because they know whatever offenses that they may be taking people to court for, will be entitled to bail. Mm -hmm. And because they cannot read the mind of the magistrate or the judge, or the, the magistrate specifically, the, for them to have a field day and for them to make Kenyans happy, they would arrest, they would definitely, they would organize themselves in a manner that they would arrest you on a Friday because there's no court on Saturday or mm -hmm. Sunday. That's the reason why they are doing it that way. So that Kenyans or over can be able to see a senior manager can spend mm -hmm. or a PS or anybody can spend over the weekend. Yes. Because they will not be asked to answer when they take the suspects to court because they, after the arrest, there was no next sitting day. Yes. So they're able to jump or to wend themselves through that legal, that, that constitutional provisions. Yes. And they will escape with it. Yes. But uh, if, we was, if they were to be more civilized, if I have to use that word. Because it is, the, why we take, because of that aspect of presumption of innocence. You are supposed to be innocent until proved guilty. And you have a right to bail. So if the court have power, the, the, even the, <coughs> the police have power to give bail, what you only need to do is consider the reasons for application of bail or, or see whether, if I have arrested this person and I have done my investigations and I want to take him to court to Tuesday, if, if I ask him, if I bond him to come to court on Monday or Tuesday, will he come or you run away? Yes. That is how we must be. Okay. We really no, need to look at things. Okay. But when you, you keep people in cells throughout, actually that is punishment. <laughs> you, it is punishment and, yes. uh, and even if you ask them, because there are people of means or any bondos, for example, kindly deposit to avoid. You know, you cannot they will be able to deposit. Say, deposit some bit of money, uh -huh. go, you relax, wait, then we'll take you to court. They will pay. Okay. Because the, what you need to avoid is a situation where a suspect will run away after arrest okay. or after, take, uh, after the fire having been prepared for presentation to court. So whatever the, the police mm -hmm. or, the, or the, the investigating agencies are doing, my, uh, in my view, have that intention. Yes, or and it does serve these a, people suffer. And as we agreed, it, it does serve a purpose. It does serve a purpose. But when I answer in Lodge, uh, there's My that friend, let me tell you. One famous legal scholar, Dennis, uh, Lord Denny, once said in the UK that it is better to release a thousand criminals than jail one innocent man. Okay. So you can imagine the pain that you've gone through 
And then after the due process is taken, is followed, you are found innocent. Are found innocent. Okay. Well, Antonio Loche, uh, uh, the of course, the, 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 there's a legal perspective, and lawyers have argued this in court. <coughs> and uh, I had one of the lawyers argue that. But there's also the discussion in Parliament. Uh, do you think that this is something that can be legislated, that uh, you can even stop police from making arrests on a Friday? Because your colleagues in the National Assembly have begun that discussion. How far do you think it can go? Well, you know, Parliament can make any law that they deem fit. It is a role of the courts mm -hmm. to determine its constitutionality. But the powers of Parliament to legislate are unlimited uh, under Article 95 and uh, 96 of the Constitution. Of course, in making laws, they're required to, uh, to consider what is the public good. Mm -hmm. To legislate in order to pro protect an individual because a member of parliament was arrested or a class of people is not good law. Mm -hmm. I think um, in terms of when and how they arrest, the timing of it, you could read mischief into it. Yeah, You could read mischief into it, but if you ask me, is it within the confines of the law? Yes, the constitution says that uh, under the rights of arrested persons, that when you arrest person, they have rights, and those rights include the right to access a lawyer, the right to mm -hmm. be told why they're arrested, the right to uh, be taken to court within reasonable time. That is the word, reasonable time. And the Constitution then goes on to say that that reasonable time is 24 hours. Mm -hmm. If that 24 hours falls on a Friday, then that's unfortunate for you. Now, that's where the deterrent part comes that if the law enforcement agency deems it fit that let's do it on Friday so that we send a message, they are not acting outside the Constitution. It may look mischievous, it may look ill-timed, but you know what? It is within the confines of the Constitution itself, mm -hmm. and it serves an additional purpose of they actually can spend time, mm -hmm. two days, 48 hours or more, in prison. And I think that sends a message to the public it puts in some confidence, and again, it acts as a deterrent to other people. Okay. So yeah. uh, we, 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 if you would not be among those uh, the National Assembly pushing for anything of that sort? I, I, I wouldn't. I know you know when you're asking me this, I am speaking both as a, as a mm -hmm. member of parliament. I am speaking also as a lawyer yes. whose client could possibly be arrested to, to, tomorrow. And I know I would probably be speaking like Tom Ogenda mm -hmm. uh, and other lawyers that you see this is uh, uh, affecting the rights of my clients. It is breaching the Constitution. It depends on which, you know, lawyers, um, somebody was asking in some other forum, why are you representing all these corrupt people? Mm -hmm. And you've seen the arguments. Uh, we, 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 we all are uh, members of the public and we don't like what is going on in terms of this corruption. But if tomorrow a client is uh, uh, arrested or charged. My first duty as a lawyer is to act in terms of the Constitution which says somebody is presumed innocent. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying I uh, pacify or I agree with what they have done, but I am acting in terms of their constitutionally guaranteed rights to, 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 to be represented, uh -huh. to make out their case, and to protect their presumption There's of a case yeah. uh, that is being discussed uh, with yeah. Brigad, one of your colleagues, a senior member of the Senate, uh, representing a governor uh, in a corruption-related matter in court. And this is uh, one of the Senate leaders. And uh, that's where conflict of interest probably comes in. Uh, do you think a senator who is also a lawyer should represent a governor in court, yet the Senate also has a, a role of oversighting the same governor? Let me, <coughs> let me before I come to that, let me add something to what my brother has said. You know, parliament can legislate on any matter. Mm -hmm. So the, their mandate is quite large enough. And I can also add that there is no law that is bad law. There is no law that is bad law. What is important is to check whether the ingredients of good law are within or uh, 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 or that law meets the, meets the requirements of what we can mm -hmm. term to or refer to as good law. And why I'm saying this is, is because uh, for any law to be good, the major aspect or test is its acceptability by its citizens. Mm -hmm. Because the power to legislate is, uh, is given to his to 
is elected represent the Kenyan elected representative. So they act on delegation power. So when the members of parliament have said this is the law, and there are here, because no law will pass without public participation or collecting information from the, from the public, then that law is good. And when you are suggesting any legislation, you will look at the mischief or the lacuna that exists in the current law that you want to cure by bringing in some new legislation. So even if they were to legislate, to say that if you arrest somebody on a Friday, then what you need to do is give him board, mm -hmm. right, P place some deposit, go to court on Monday. They will be looking, probably, they will be saying, these people have become too much, and we must also protect those Kenyans that are being arrested and are probably won't be found to be innocent. So I wouldn't have a problem, okay. personally, with what they are doing. Then there's this aspect of whether a lawyer can represent who is a senator or a member of parliament, like my brother here, can represent... My biggest concern is a senator because uh, uh, the senate is directly the oversight, oversight of the county. And I'm talking about a senator uh, representing uh, a governor on a corruption-related matter which directly falls under their oversight role. Now, let us be able to differentiate these two. The governor who is doing his oversight role. The governor who is a lawyer. And you know, lawyers, I wish everybody was in a position to understand as a bit of law, because we'll be very liberal. Because you'll have the best life on earth because you free your mind. You think outside the box. And uh, I am saying this because the question I would ask myself, does the seat you occupy as senator uh, in any manner tell you or make you, uh, make you unconscionable? Because other than anything else that we do, you must have a conscience. And when you have taken the office, the oath of office of a senator, one for, remember is to protect the constitution of Kenya, mm -hmm. right? And the constitution of Kenya says there is that presumption of innocence before you are proved in guilty. The work of a lawyer is not to ensure that one is acquitted. No, that is not his business. The work of the lawyer is to sit there, defend his client, and see and ensure that the law being applied is what, on him, is what really the Constitution and the law requires. He will only sit there to ensure that the due process of law is followed to ensure that there is fairness in the trial. He will only sit there to make sure that if you are found guilty, then the sentence or the fines met by the courts are within what the law provides because he expects them to know the law. So he, the lawyer will not change facts. Because for you to be taken to court, there must be evidence. There must be facts. So you will not change them. So you would want to sit there, listen to the prosecution, table your evidence and facts, and then talk to his client and tell his client, my brother, these are the ch changes we are facing. And for that matter, what evidence do you have to rebut what these people are saying. My, co my concern is this same lawyer would still probably be called upon to uh, adjudicate or uh, probably probe the same allegations made in court, uh, probably in a Senate committee. Yeah, through a Senate it is committee. at that level. Uh, do, do you think uh, yeah, that uh, yeah. there's no conflict of interest in that kind um, of treatment? If, if you put it that way, uh, you would have to ask the question before I separate the two roles. If the, the, the specific senator was, for example, chair of uh, okay. public accounts mm -hmm. committee or public investment committee, and the matter was active or live or likely to be active or live before that particular person or chair, there is a conflict. But if and when that comes, and he has already taken the uh, position that I'm going to represent this client, uh, the Public Ethics Officers Act or the Constitution, whatever it is, dictates that when the matter becomes live, they declare their interest and say, look, I cannot share this mm -hmm. because I already represent this person in court. Uh, and, and I've seen it before. I mean, um, uh, Mutula Kilonzo Jr., once when we took uh, a matter before uh, uh, the, 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 the Senate, we were representing uh, then the deputy governor of, of Machakos County. 
And he declared in the committee that, you know, I am conflicted in this. Mm -hmm. And he was in a position where he was going to chair his steps as aside. That's required of the Constitution. It's good uh, public practice. But the particular instance where you're calling to become an advocate does not conflict with the immediate process before you of the same issue. Mm -hmm. We must allow the, 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 the senator or whoever it is to be able to represent. And the situation has arisen in, 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 in courts before, I think involving the question, one, whether a member of parliament or a senator is a state officer, and therefore, can they appear in court? Mm -hmm. Are they taking up two jobs? And the court has adjudicated in more than one instances yeah. that there is no conflict. A lawyer and their calling as a lawyer is very separate from their public representation okay. uh, uh, in Parliament. So on that score, unless uh, the governor is going to appear before the, the instant senator, the, 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 the calling and duty as a lawyer uh, uh, remains, it's not conflicted. Okay. And, 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 and there are instances, a good debate though that we need to have, and I'll tell you this without mentioning names, you know from my political side of the divide, mm -hmm. our position was that the election was never conducted properly. <coughs> then you must imagine how difficult it, it, it is or has been yes. for a lawyer like myself or lawyers who are representing uh, the NASA divide to have to appear in court and then say, you know, in respect of this Senate seat or this MP or this governor, IBC did a good job. You're yes. representing a sitting, mm -hmm. uh, a very, very difficult uh, position. So in the end, it narrows down to what does your conscience tell you? Mm 